Hello and welcome to another video. This is intended to be just a very nice, slow paced and relaxing video featuring some of my Katie dids. Starting off with one of the strangest of the bunch, Acropisa reticulata. You may recognise this odd insect from a couple of my more recent uploads, including one where I showed a wild individual performing a rather spectacular threat display where it exposes bright coloration beneath its wings in an effort to startle any potential predators that are targeting it. Now the ones that I have at home seem to have gotten too used to me to do that because I actually tried to get them to threat pose for this video, but they just weren't willing to, which I guess in a way is a good thing, because it means that they've calmed down. The species Acropisa reticulata is endemic to the eastern coast of Australia and has quite a wide distribution, although it is pretty patchy. It goes by a couple of common names, including the alpine katydid and the mountain katydid, because many populations of this species occur at rather high altitudes. However, this individual is something of an exception, coming from a low elevation bushland reserve just outside Brisbane City. The Acropisa from Brisbane seem to be different from their alpine counterparts in a number of ways. First of all, they appear to be arboreal as opposed to being predominantly terrestrial like the ones found at high altitudes. Also, their diet is different as well. Acropisa reticulata is generally well known for feeding predominantly on ragworts or fireweeds as they're sometimes called whereas these feed almost exclusively on a kind of vine which I have not yet been able to identify, but is certainly very different from their usual diet. I currently own two adult females and they are doing well in captivity. Both individuals are laying a very large amount of eggs, so he is hoping that at least some of them hatch. And the good thing about having a lot of eggs is it means that I can experiment with different methods of incubation. So Acropisa reticulata is a pretty cool insect, but the Katydid family is incredibly diverse with an enormous array of different forms. So let's see what else the Katydids have to offer. Here is what is likely to be another familiar face for followers of this channel. This is Ephipitatha trigentidrogatata, the katydid whose name I had a little bit of trouble learning to pronounce. The common name is the 32 spotted katydid because, well, no prizes for guessing why. This is a large and rather flamboyant looking insect that is common across much of Australia and is pretty abundant here in southeast Queensland, although they aren't often seen because they usually live quite high up in trees and it takes quite a fair bit of luck to be able to find one closer to the ground. These katydids inhabit various eucalyptus tree species and they feed on their leaves. The wings of the adult katydids resemble a chewed up eucalyptus leaf and provide a rather effective camouflage. Though unlike Acropisa reticulata, there are no colourful surprises beneath. I currently own six individuals of this species, five females and a male, and I have seen evidence of breeding. The male has been calling a lot and I have seen females carrying spermatophores around, which suggests that they have mated. However, I have yet to see any eggs getting laid, but fingers crossed, I guess. And here we can see the katydid cleaning its foot. And while we're on that topic, I often laugh when people say that they think bugs are gross because when you see bugs doing things like this after touching a human, it becomes pretty clear that the feeling goes both ways. Rather surprisingly perhaps, katydids were not something I was very interested in at all until really quite recently. I mean, I had been aware of the existence of katydids for a very long time, I mean, how could you not? But until I found my first Acropisa reticulata and then a little bit later some Ephipitatha trigentidrogatata, I never got to appreciate in the flesh just how amazing some of these insects can look. 
and quite frankly they have quickly become some of my favourite animals to keep, although they're not going to beat centipedes, they shouldn't even try. Ephipitata trigenta durogatata and Aquapisa reticulata are both familiar faces on this channel recently, but the next catedid I'm about to show you should be something completely new. This little beauty is Torbia viridissima, the gum leaf catedid, and that common name is not one that I think I should need to explain to you. Like Ephipitata trigenta durogatata, this species is a herbivore that feeds predominantly on eucalyptus leaves, among which it is exceptionally well camouflaged. I should also add that it shares the name of gum leaf catedid with the members of the genus Terpandrus, which are significantly larger in size and, unlike Torbia, are predators. Now, like all catedids, it is pretty easy to tell the sex of an adult or close to adult individual. You just have to look up their behind. Well, no, more, more PG rated. Uh, females will have a structure called an ovipositor protruding out from the end of the abdomen that the males lack, and the ovipositor is used to lay eggs. Now, I didn't get much footage of this catedids ovipositor because, you know, it's a nice looking insect and I don't want to waste all my camera time staring up its behind. Uh, but yeah, this one is a female, it has a short but still noticeable ovipositor. Which is all it really needs because it lays its eggs on leaves. Some catedids can have substantially longer ovipositors, especially ones that lay their eggs in the soil, because a long ovipositor allows them to burrow their eggs fairly deep in the substrate without actually having to dig themselves. The newly hatched offspring of this species, as well as a number of other catedids including Ephipitata trigenta duogatata, very closely resemble ants, and this is a very effective form of mimicry for young catedids, as ants are often not the target of many predators. As they grow, they drop this disguise and instead adopt the green coloration that they use to camouflage themselves among the foliage that they dwell in. Many catedids mimic leaves with incredible effectiveness and this species is no exception. Not only do the catedids wings contain a perfect imitation of the leaves midrib, it also mimics the leaf's smaller veins to a near immaculate level of detail. So that's the end of this video. And like I said before, don't worry, catedids are not going to top centipedes as my favourite pets to feature on this channel, so you'll still get what you subscribed for, don't worry. But for me at least, they are a clear sign that even when you've been interested in invertebrates for years and years, you can still find some new things to spark your interest seemingly out of nowhere. All it took for me was just finding a couple of random catedids in the bush. Now if you enjoy my content then feel free to check out some of my other uploads and of course don't forget to subscribe if you wish. Because according to YouTube statistics only 20% of... I, I, I don't know, I'm not a Minecraft YouTuber, I'm not going to bring that up. But uh, yeah, so thank you all very much for watching, that's it from me and I'll see you again very soon.